So I get asked a lot, what 3D printer do, do I recommend? And I always found that question to be a bit tricky. Um, what printer is best for you really depends on a lot of factors. Is it your first 3D printer? What's your experience level? What's your budget? Budget's probably the biggest one. Now currently I still think that the FLSUN Q5 is like one of the best choices if you're trying to get into 3D printing. I had one for quite a long time. I have the FLSUN SR now, which is essentially the same thing, a little bigger and uh, a little more expensive. But I recently gave my Q5 to my brother for his first 3D printer, and he's been using it ever since I gave it to him without issue. However, the FLSUN Q5, while affordable at $269, might be more than some wanna pay for their first 3D printer, especially if you aren't like super tech savvy and you don't want something that you have to assemble. Or maybe you just want to pay as little as possible because you're not really sure if this whole 3D printing thing is going to be something that you're going to be interested in long term. Well, then the WeDo Tina 2 might be exactly what you're looking for. Now, you probably noticed that I don't really review a lot of 3D printers on my channel, mostly because if you've seen like one Cartesian 3D printer, you've pretty much seen them all. The printers that I choose to look at on my ch channel are printers that I find interesting for one way or another. Maybe they're like a big Delta or they're cheap, like this one. Yes, the main reason uh, when we do reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to look at the Tina 2, I said yes, was because of the price of this printer. The Tina 2 comes in at $149, and the question I had when I saw that was, does $149 get you a printer that actually prints halfway decent, and is it easy to use? Now, for your $149, you're gonna get the Tina 2 3D printer. You're also gonna get an SD card, the power adapter that goes with it, the little adapter that lets you plug that SD card into your computer, a glue stick so you can get prints to stick to the build plate, some tools, and an extra nozzle. I should mention there's also another version of this printer for $199, and that comes with pretty much all the same stuff with the addition of a USB cable and 200 grams of PLA. Is that worth it? Mm. We'll talk about that towards the end, but right now let's talk about the printer itself. Assembly. The Tina 2 doesn't have any assembly. Basically you pull this thing out of the box, remove some packing material, and you're ready to go. The nozzle size is 0.4 millimeters. The build volume is 100 by 105 by 100, and the printing speed is about 40 millimeters per second. The overall size of the Tina 2 3D printer is 210 by 210 by 290, and it weighs about three kilograms. Now this printer is compatible with PLA, and that's pretty much the only material you're gonna be able to use with this 3D printer, and you can send prints to it via USB, the micro SD card, or Wi-Fi. Yes, the Tina 2 has Wi-Fi, which is something you sometimes don't even see on much more expensive printers. Now, to use the Wi-Fi feature to print uh, with the Tina 2, you're gonna need to download their Polo Print app. And to be honest, I have a few printers that are Wi-Fi compatible, and I've never really gone through the process of setting it up. Um, I don't know, I guess somebody looking for Wi-Fi wi -Fi specifically, it's a good feature, but for me, as of now, I could take it or leave it. Maybe that'll change once I use it, but it does have it. Other features this printer has is a flexible, removable build plate for easy part removal, automatic bed leveling, and a resume print function, meaning that if for some reason you lose power while you're printing something, as soon as power is restored, you can resume your print. All in all, I think the features that we do chose for this printer are pretty good, especially given the target demographic of this printer. The whole idea behind the Tina 2 3D printer is to make 3D printing as easy as possible so anyone can do it, especially kids. So automatic bed leveling and resume prints are perfect functions to have, so somebody starting out 3D printing can have the best chance to have a, a favorable experience and not have a spaghetti explosion when they try to start their first print. That being said, however, I think the biggest downside of this printer is its print volume. It's pretty small. With the size of the build plate, you're not going to be printing any humongous parts, which again, I don't think is too big of a deal. The, bi the biggest problem though is you're like 15 millimeters short of making a fan for the fan showdown if you use this. But that being said, the people that this printer was designed for were probably going to be printing toys and trinkets anyhow, so it should work just fine. So that's what I did. I set out to print a bunch of different little trinkets and toys, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they turned out a lot better than I thought, especially given the shortcomings of this printer, that being that there's no filament cooling fan and there's no heated build plate. Now I started out by printing, you know, some of the stuff that came on. Where, where's that? Where's my reindeer? Ah! I started out first by printing some of the stuff that came pre-installed on the card, and I will say it turned out 
a lot better than I thought. Even the little reindeer, its head moves, its print in place joints all function properly, even the little legs so it stands up. I was pretty impressed, but we can all say pretty confidently that no matter what printer you buy, the, the, the models that are preloaded on the card are almost always going to print perfectly. Wouldn't be a good look if they sent you a printer with models already sent or loaded on the card and they all failed. So after these guys, it was time to print some boats. Now the first boat that I tried to print had some issues sticking to the build plate, which is to be expected. Again, this is not a heated build plate, so you're gonna, make sh you're gonna need to make sure that you put some glue stick or something on it before you start printing to give yourself the best possibility of completion. Also a raft is very useful for that. Obviously it didn't work this time. But after a little more glue stick, we got a new boat. And for the most part, I'm actually pretty impressed. Again, no filament cooling fan, so I really expected some <laughs> melted, gooey looking uh, mistakes, but that wasn't the case. There is, of course, some stringing, but that could probably be tuned out. I didn't do any tuning on the software because I want to see how everything functioned right out of the box because that's how most people are going to use this printer. But I will say I'm pretty impressed. Now, the software that comes with this printer is a version of Cura. Uh, it does have a profile already pre-installed for the my boat for the tina 2 and uh, it seemed to work pretty well so essentially all you need to do if you buy this is pull it out of the box unpack it go to a place like thingiverse pull down a model throw it in the slicer and toys you're ready to go other than that the only other thing i really notice on this boat is maybe some minor layer misalignment but for the most part it's not a bad uh it's not a bad little boat now the next thing i printed is one of my favorite go-to's is this little tiny octopus with the with the movable joints and again it came out pretty good we still have a little bit of stringing to be expected but it came off the raft really well all the features are there and uh, most importantly all the legs work e. and then the last model i wanted to print was baby yoda the reason i chose this one is it pretty much fills up the entire build volume without having to scale it any and i wanted to see how the detail persisted and how well or not well, the support material came off the model. And I will say the support material came off pretty good. Ignore the fact that Yoda's, Yoda's missing his right hand. That's, uh, that's my fault for being an ape with the flush cutters. But for the most part, all the support material came, came off as you would expect. The details there, it's definitely, you can definitely tell it's Yoda. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed, I have to say. So in the end, how do I feel about the Tina 2 3D printer? I kind of like it. Yeah, it's not for everybody, but the people that it was designed for, it does a good job. Now, should you buy it? Um, that depends. If, if we talk about the 199 version, which is basically this system, plus a roll of PLA, 200 grams of it, and a USB cable, no. I mean, you would be better off buying the basic for 149 than picking up a standard 2kg roll or 1kg roll, my bad. And you'd have more PLA and it'd be cheaper, it's about 20 bucks. And then if you actually do need an S or a USB cable, for whatever reason, you could probably find one in a drawer in your house or pick one up on Amazon for cheaply or for cheap. Now I will mention though, the printer has a spool holder, but it's set up to hold 200 gram roll. So if you want to use a 1kg roll, you're either going to have to make an adapter or you're going to have to restring it on the smaller one or just buy 200 gram rolls. So that's Kind of a bummer but not that big of a deal you can also get external roll holders so so i guess that brings us to this one the 149 dollars basic version i guess this one did come with the usb cable and the spool holder but essentially they're the same does this one is this one worth purchasing if you don't mind the very limited build volume then i think yes um this printer will allow you to get in there start 3d printing kind of see how the whole process works and as you get more familiar with the slot the slicing software you can go into the custom tab and start tweaking things to try to make things better and if things go crazy you can always default back to the default profiles pre-installed and then you can also if 3d printing turns out to be something you like you can save up a larger budget to get a bigger machine to unlock more potential for larger prints also this is a good printer for kids if you have young kids you want to get into 3D printing, this is a good unit to pick up. It's small, it's relatively cheap, so if they don't like it, you don't have to feel bad about spending a bunch of money. Also, all the hot stuff is pretty well guarded, so you don't have to worry about any fingers getting somewhere they're not supposed to while things are printing. And I think for beginners, and especially kids, this is a great model to pick up 
to start 3D printing. So in the end, I think we do really set out to make a printer that was small, easy to use, cheap to get more people interested in the 3D printing hobby. And I think they did a pretty good job with the Tina 2. And now I should say that they did send me this printer for review, but they have no, no other input on this video. They're not gonna see it before it goes live. But I think what they made was great because it does print pretty well. And more importantly, it gets more people into 3D printing without having to spend tons and tons of money. So I hope you liked the video. If you want to pick up a Tina 2, I'll leave a link in the description below. Make sure to get subscribed. We'll see you next time.